Hello, everyone. This is Professor Gardner. I just wanted to check in with you. Um, we are now entering uh, the fourth week of the semester. We are in our last week looking at Sandra Cisneros's A House of My Own. Um, I've noticed in the last couple of weeks, especially last week with our uh, use of gender politics and how we're applying it to her reading, um, that the, uh, the selection, uh, Guadalupe, the sex goddess, came up. Um, there were different times when um, Cisneros gestured to this identity, this Mexican-American identity that um, called upon the Mexican aspect, which was also split between Spanish and indigenous. So today I tried to um, upload lecture content to explain the, in some, to, to some extent, it, it focused specifically on La Virgen de Guadalupe, uh, a little more historical information on who this figure is, because she is such an important feminine model uh, to Mexican identity and Mexican-American identity. And when I say a model too, I, I should say one of the models available and most often praised. Um, so it's very important that we understand that construction of femininity that La Virgen uh, de Guadalupe uh, embodies. Um, and it also is a particular way of practicing uh, gender politics and, ana and analyzing it, considering who is this figure. Um, and we can see that, that uh, this is certainly a figure that Sandra Cisneros um, uh, has a complex relationship with. Uh, I, I would say at different times um, resists very explicitly. Um, but then in, in other selections tries to break down. I mean, and like I mentioned, in the selection about um, Guadalupe, the sex goddess, she turns to the Aztec roots of uh, La Vigen. Um, so with that, I wanted to, I thought it was necessary to provide some more context, and that's what this week's lecture really does. It tries to address some of the historical and cultural context to that, that model of femininity. Um, so that's why there's so much lecture this week about um, who um, the Virgin Mary is, and um, the uh, Spanish and Aztec uh, kind of conquest. Um, as far as my own gender politics reading, I was late on submitting this to our discussion board, so I'll just kind of give it to you here in the discussion board. Um, I, the, the one that I thought was interesting was the story Only Daughter, um, and that's because it's kind of uh, in the form of a mystery or a detective story. Um, if you look at the history of detective fiction, most oftentimes, or at least um, when it first began, certainly in the United States with Edgar Allan Poe. Edgar Allan Poe is often known as, um, you know, a, a scary story writer, a gothic writer, but uh, he really kind of is the progenitor of uh, detective fiction with his character um, uh, Dupin, I believe. So if you look at um, the murders in the Rue Morgue, or the purloined letter, you can find this detective. Um, but there's a very masculine tradition behind this, and it's associated with rationalism, right? So there's a gender politics to the genre of the mystery of the detective, uh, certainly in the 19th century, um, both American and British too, right? We have this. And um, Cisneros herself, in that writing, mentions, she makes the allusion to Sherlock Holmes, right? So right there, she's putting us into that tradition of the detective, of the mystery, um, and it has a masculine figure driving it, and it's a figure that operates based on intellect and reason, right? And so it kind of creates that association. Well, she turns it on its head, um, putting herself in the, in the position as the detective figure. Um, so I thought that was an interesting little twist, kind of as she's doing some detective work on her family history. And that's what I would have posted to the discussion board had I uh, done it on time. So nonetheless, uh, I wanted to give you a little heads up on what lecture was about this week, uh, why I have that there, and um, to give you my take on like a little bit of a gendered reading of Cisneros' work. The other thing I would say is Cisneros uh, references several other very good writers. Um, writers that I've taught in other classes, and another one that I'm going to teach that actually we're going to follow her up with. Um, so she mentions Rosario Castellanos. Uh, I believe she identifies her as a feminist writer, um, and certainly she is part of a feminist tradition of Mexican writers. Um, the, uh, the book that I recommend reading that Rosario Castellanos wrote is called, let's see if you can see it there, The Book of Lamentations. 
I've taught this book before in um, Mexican literature and translation. Uh, Castellanos uh, writes in in very much, even though she was even though this was published in the 1960s, she writes more in kind of like a 19th century uh, realist uh, style. Um, so I recommend that. And uh, the other one is a couple of other short stories that Sandra Cisneros writes that are very much connected to the selections from the memoir that we looked at. And the two short stories that um, I'm thinking of come from this collection called Woman Hollering Creek. Um, they are uh, Little Miracles Kept Promises. That's the title of one story. And the other story is Eyes of Zapata. So if you are interested in analyzing this memoir and Cisneros' writing, okay, and you're considering it as possibly something you would want to study at length uh, and use as the subject for a research paper later in the semester, uh, I encourage you to start making connections among the different selections and among uh, not just Cisneros' memoir, but some of the other works that I've just suggested there. And of course, the, the writer that we'll be looking at next week that Cisneros kind of anticipates in her selections is Gloria Ansueldua, uh, The Borderlands. I didn't require you get this whole book. It's a lengthy book. Um, instead, I have um, scanned different uh, sections that I will have you read, and those will be posted to the course website. So, um, Enjoy our last week of looking at Cisneros and get ready for uh, Gloria Ansueldua. The lecture material we're looking at this week regarding Mexican identity, um, it's a complex uh, uh, constitution of indigenous and Spanish heritage, is something that Ansueldua is going to pick up in her writings, um, in, in her kind of hybrid memoir uh, poetic piece, uh, La Frontera. All right, that's all for now. If you have any questions about anything um, in this little video, uh, please feel free to let me know. Have a good week.